Hello, my name is Fernando Guerrero. I am currently a senior at the University of New Mexico studying chemistry, and today I'm going to be talking about the synthesis of metal silica-based nanomaterials. The premise behind this project is essentially to generate a better scintillator material. Scintillators are any materials that fluoresce when struck by a high-energy particle. In most cases, that particle is a photon. We see scintillator materials in x-ray security systems at airports, we see them in medical CT scans, and they come in a variety of different forms, including glasses, organic complexes, inorganic crystals, inorganic solutions. And what we see from industry standards of these materials are that a lot of the more efficient scintillator materials are actually lanthanide-based or doped with lanthanides in one form or the other. And this is really important to understand why. We actually see lanthanides in a lot of our technology, so we see them in our cars, we see them in our cell phones, we also see them in super magnets, and even in certain lasers. And the important thing to know about these lanthanides is that they have the ability to fluoresce. And so in this Deke diagram, we see different energy levels of these lanthanides. And what we can see is that in certain lanthanides, there is the potential for a relaxation to release a photon in the visible range. And so that's really important. So the premise behind this project, again, was to make a better scintillator material. We started with group fours and this HSST ligand. And what we did was we complexed the two together and we thermally treated them. These materials that we got from this thermal treatment came in different, in different configurations. But the more interesting one was this coarse shell configuration where there's a core of the metal oxide and a shell of the silicon oxide. And so what we see here is that the silicon dioxide actually protects the core and makes it really radiation resistant. And this is great, however, these are not fluorescent and they don't have any luminescent behavior. So they're not very good scintillator materials. The next step would be to actually generate a fluorescent core shell material and to do that, we turn to the lanthanides, and that's where I came in. So the first step in this process is to synthesize about 17 or 18 novel lanthanide SST precursors, which I did, and characterize all of them, which I have done, and then start converting those into the materials using a box furnace, solution precipitation, or solvothermal method. I've tried all of these. I have also tried a variety of different SST species, we are also looking at the nitrates and some other students in our group are actually looking at phosphates and other commercially available lanthanides. If you have any questions about my poster or my research, I'd be happy to answer them if you reach out to me. Thank you. I appreciate your time.